We stand at a threshold, listening to the whispers of unknown forces, begging for change. The light within the dark calls. How will you answer? Welcome, my name is Candace Sanderson, and I want to share with you an interesting story. I recently attended the monthly holistic fair at Church of Spiritual Light in nearby Fort Myers, Florida. If you follow me or have read my books, you know how fondly I speak of this all faith, no faith church. I scheduled three back-to-back -back sessions at the fair. The first was a Reiki energy healing session conducted by Reverend Renee Bledsoe, minister at the church, followed by Yvette's healing session using tuning forks and ending with a crystal reading with Sandy. Not surprisingly, some very interesting things occurred, but what were they? Inner wisdom? Perhaps they were just coincidence. I know that my interpretation of these events will probably be different if I look back at this a year from now. But I can guarantee you that years ago, if I had known about this or had experienced it, I would have thought that these events were great, they were interesting, but anything significant beyond that would definitely have escaped me. We have the eyes to see and the ears to hear, but our understanding waxes and wanes according to our truth. You see, truth surpasses what our physical senses can measure. And it's often based on these unexpected circumstances. But will we allow these events to awaken our inner wisdom? That is key. We have the opportunity, if we do not dismiss these occurrences as coincidental, as meaningless beyond an uncanny or fascinating connection. Spirit often works this way through subtle hints of wisdom. Let me explain what happened during the fair and then you decide for yourself what these events are what meaning they might hold for you. By taking time to analyze them, the picture might become clearer. And if not now, perhaps later. First of all, these holistic sessions are only 30 minutes each, but that is certainly enough time to have some spectacular experiences. In my first session, I relaxed on a massage table as Reverend Bledsoe began Reiki. Later, she told me this was Sakim Reiki, fire Reiki, and I wasn't surprised because her hands felt like they were on fire. As with most Reiki healing, she does not touch you, but instead she holds her hands above your body which makes feeling the heat even more impressive. This energy was so deep and intense that I literally felt it in my bones. Not long after the session began, I slipped into that familiar out-of-body state, allowing me to simultaneously be the observer and the experiencer. As the fire Reiki from Reverend Bledsoe's hands heated my skeleton, I saw and felt layers of ash lifting from me. It was like fire that was burning trash in a furnace. I took a deep breath and then from the observer point of view, I just watched and I zeroed in on these layers of ash and I realized a couple things. First of all, they were spiraling upward in the formation of a swirling funnel. I came in for a closer view and I realized this spinning mass of ash had morphed into winged creatures. My first thought was butterflies, but no, 
these were not butterflies. They didn't have that ornate rounded wings. Instead, the wings were more angular. I did not see any color, but that could have been because of that dusting of gray ash that covered them. As they flew up and away, I then had a better view of my body below. And I was surprised to see my skeleton was still there. The bones that were left were glowing brightly like hot embers. Within seconds, these embers, my bones, began to disintegrate. And as these sparks crumbled, they began falling below my body in a formation that was the direct mirror image of the ashes above. These golden embers fell into what I call an inverted funnel formation. I realized that the Reiki, the energy from the Reiki had created an hourglass shape that we can find inside a toroidal field, a torus. And where was I? I was in the middle in that connective tissue between what had been me, my bones, the foundation of my physical existence. I was in that in-between state, no longer existing as a human being in the 3D world. Instead, I floated in this liminal space between above and below, between within and without. As I drifted farther outside of time and space, I felt a ripple. There was a presence. Someone was with me. When I turned to my right, I saw a male figure with long, light brown hair, and I immediately knew that he was an ascended master. Being in the presence of him sent me deeper into this timeless space. And the remnants of what had been my energy body dissolved. I became one with the primordial sea of nothingness, yet all things. I was no longer 3D. I was pure vibration and frequency. I took another deep breath as I floated in this state of stillness, of, of neutrality. I was drifting in a slow motion pattern that I knew was sacred, that I knew was from the divine. I intuitively knew I was reliving the vibrations of creation and that I had been there before with this ascended master who stood before me. I had returned to the beginning, but what beginning? I did not know. Was this my beginning? Was this the beginning of the universe? Was this creation? And who was he, this ascended master? Now, as that thought entered my mind, he looked in my direction and telepathically communicated what I already knew, that I did not know him. He said that I would learn his name when I was ready for that information. Now, let me give a little aside here. I have met many messengers over the years, and I rarely ask or even wonder who they are. Their conversations, their messages are always so much more important than their identities. So for me to wonder who is this, that's unusual. Little did I know that I would soon find answers. The Ascended Master told me that I stand at a threshold, that there is a light that guides me, that guides all of us. But why is it that many do not see that light? Why do many go about their lives living blindly, not finding a path of love, of compassion, of peace? Each path is sacred. Some are securitous. Some paths are much more direct. Now, 
it was at this moment that I had an aha moment and I began to understand. I realized that I am not in that connective tissue between above and below, between within and without. I realized that I am the connected tissue and this is the medium that links me to this unknown Ascended Master. I stand at a threshold and have a choice. Do I dare enter? And is that not a question for all of us? A choice before each one of us. The Ascended Master faded in my awareness, what my messengers called the POE point of existence, Return to the 3D, back to the massage table at Church of Spiritual Light. Reverend Bledsoe had completed the fire Reiki session, and I needed to move on to my next appointment, tuning forks with Yvette. But before moving on, I did something that's important. I quickly told Reverend Bledsoe about my experience, about my burning bones, about the ashes that morphed into winged creatures, meeting an unnamed ascended master and floating in those sacred frequencies of the beginning, my beginning. She then told me about using fire Reiki and that certainly explained my burning bones. She also told me about the person she had just worked on before me and how that person had a tattoo of a bat on her stomach a perfect description of those winged creatures that I saw flying upward. Initially, I did not know what to make of this. Was it a validation that I indeed had stepped out of time and space? Had my awareness slipped in the past to view the person with the bat tattoo? Who knows? I told Reverend Bledsoe about the unnamed Ascended Master not knowing that his name would soon be revealed to me. So for those of you who have had such experiences, your brain, at least initially, wants to tell you that, oh, you're making this up. I urge you to take the time to share it with others, or maybe just jot down a few notes so that later, when validations occur, you can prove to yourself that these were not figments of your imagination. So after telling Reverend Bledsoe, I then moved to the tuning fork healing session, and I relaxed into this beautiful, comfortable chair. Yvette came and she started using a couple of different tuning forks, running them over my energy body. Now, I had never had this session before, but my body like greedily absorbed these frequencies of this ancient healing form, sound vibrations. When completed, I felt complete. I felt a wholeness that was not there before. It felt like the energies from the fire Reiki were now integrating their frequencies into me. This was a perfect balance and a restructuring of my energy body. I gave Yvette my thanks and I moved to the final session, a crystal reading with Sandy. I love Sandy's readings because of the insights and the validations she provides. The message begins when I pick three crystals from her table and then I choose a crystal oracle card from multiple decks of cards. The crystals in the readings were accurate, but was I ever in for a surprise with the last card reading? This was from an oracle deck that connects the crystal spiritual world with Ascended Masters. It's called Crystal Masters 333 by Alana Fairchild. I pulled card number 30, which was Ascended Master White Matthew, and the crystal was Dan Bright. The short blessing on the card was, quote, original self. That is interesting on several levels. 
First of all, Sandy has used this deck for years. And she told me no one had ever pulled this card before. Together, we got our phones out and we looked up the Ascended Master White Matthew. Professor Google gave us some more information. No wonder neither of us have heard of him. He was only identified as an Ascended Master in May of 2003. So we've got White Matthew, the white representing purity on the card. The next step is let's look up Danbarite crystal. It's a crystal I was not familiar with. It's made of calcium and silicon. Well, 99% of the body's calcium comes from where? You guessed it, from the teeth and bones. Isn't that interesting? It takes me back again to the fire reiki where my bones burned into ash and embers. This is another one of those synchronistic findings. So is this validation or simply an interesting connection? The card says that Dan Barai represents the innocence of the original self. Once again, original self, I reflected back on the Reiki session where I melted into the vibrations of my beginning. Yes, of my original self. For me, when things come together like this, in perfect harmony, I know they are from spirit. I did not always think that way, but I do now. But yes, this was perfect harmony. And then my mind flashes back to the tuning fork healing with Yvette, putting all in perfect harmony with sound vibrations. Sandy and I read the description of this remarkable card from the DEX manual. It said that if you pull this card, you are growing, quote, more radiant. Radiant? like the radiations from my bones, that is a literal translation of becoming radiant. And the message continued saying that with this radiance, quote, layers of your identity begin to fall away, allowing you to go back and discover your original self. Again, you can't make this up. That was exactly what I had experienced during Reiki. Radiant embers falling, opening the door for Ascended Master, whom I now know is White Matthew, to enter and take me back to the vibrations of creation to, as the card says, my original self. And just in case I thought I was inventing this, which I don't think that at this point in my journey, I had Reverend Bledsoe to back me up since I told her all of this right after the Reiki session. This was another validation, just like the bat tattoo. Had my stepping out of time and space moved me to the future by 30 minutes to show me the Ascended Master, to show me the radiance falling away in layers. Had I seen the future knowing I would pull this card? Or perhaps these validations are from Spirit, showing me something be beyond the parlor trick essence of time travel. Was it showing me my truth? Do we step into those fields of knowing and within those moments? We can slip back in time, slipping into the frequencies of the beginning to tap into our original self. We can slip into the future to see what might happen. We see the connection because we are the connection. We 
are timeless versions of all that is. We are the droplet of spray that shoots from a crashing wave in the middle of the ocean. As we ascend, we feel alive, free, independent. Sometimes this is invigorating. Other times it might feel frightening or lonely. But when we descend back into the ocean, we realize we are back home. We realize we never left home. We were always connected. We realize we are the ocean, connected to everything, to every place at every time. I honor my feelings. I realize what an important life lesson I gained from these three back-to-back -back services at the Holistic Fair. Each session was perfectly aligned with my healing process. Although seemingly unrelated, I understand that in actuality, each service was weaving an intricate pattern of truth with the capital T that returned me to my original self. My willingness to be open allowed the energy to flow. I thought about the words from Ascended Master White Matthew. His message was important. We do stand at a threshold, guided by a light that shines for all of us. But the decision is ours. Will we choose to cross that threshold into the realms of the divine? the realms of wisdom where truth seeks us, where time does not exist, where we feel and live the unity of all that is. Home. When you are ready to cross that threshold into wisdom, I hope I'm there waiting for us to travel together to lead us and others into the light of awareness, of understanding, of peace, of wisdom. I hope you enjoyed today's episode, and I want to thank you for joining me today. I welcome any comments, shares, new subscribers. Remember the importance of being true to yourself. Listen to your inner wisdom. And let that guide you with kindness, with compassion, and with peace. Until next time, goodbye. <music>